Hello and welcome to a new very interesting video. This video is about this project here and today we are in the basement lab. Actually I have uh, two electronic labs. One is upstairs and this one here is in the basement. And here I have uh, more RF related test equipment and, and also microwave related test equipment. And this project is RF and microwave related. So that's why we are here. Um, so what is this whole thing doing here? Um, this is actually a circuit that stabilizes a 1.8 gigahertz oscillator and it uses a 20 megahertz crystal oscillator as reference to stabilize this um, 1.8 gigahertz oscillator because of course you cannot build a 1.8 gigahertz oscillator with a crystal or something and this oscillator has temperature drift, so it, it changes its frequency of oscillation with temperature, it changes its frequency of oscillation with aging, it changes it with uh, supply voltage variation, it changes it with component variation, and so on and so forth. So this is not very stable. And a crystal oscillator, on the other hand, is very stable. Um, so the idea is to uh, stabilize this 1.8 gigahertz with this crystal. And um, the challenge with this project was to build this whole loop uh, and this whole circuit without any integrated components, without any ICs, without any integrated circuits. And just, just using basic components like transistors, diodes, inductors, uh, capacitors, resistors, transformers, and so on. But no uh, integrated circuits, just very on the very basic levels on, on very physical level and and i love to build circuits that way and i, I really enjoy the challenge of, of building circuits that way so most of my um inventions are uh completely discrete and this is also based on my own ideas and um i will give you an overview of the whole thing um and i will but I won't, in this video I won't go into specific circuit details. Um, it depends um, if someone is interested then maybe I can go a bit deeper in some of the details. Um, there are some circuits that I, I like to explain so yeah. Um, but before I show you um, the circuit um, I will show you its functioning first. So just that you see what it is doing and then um, I will show you how or uh, why is it doing what it is doing. So now we move on to the spectrum analyzer. So okay, here we are at the spectrum analyzer. I have adjusted everything. Uh, so now the center frequency is 1.8 gigahertz. We have a span of 200 megahertz. This means the upper limit is 1.9 gigahertz and the lower limit is 1.7 gigahertz and we expect it to oscillate at exactly at the center. Um, and um, the interesting thing is it won't oscillate at exactly the center. It, it will oscillate with a tiny, tiny offset. You won't see it with this span now because it's really tiny. It's about uh, 225 kilohertz. So it will oscillate at 1.8 gigahertz plus 225 kilohertz. And it's very interesting why this is. I will explain uh, it later why this is when we take a look at the uh, circuit or at the block diagram um, but with this span of um, 200 megahertz you, you won't see any offset of course you you will see the offset if I uh, zoom in but now let's get ready let's turn uh, it on so now I turn on the power supply and there we go it has immediately locked to the center to 1.8 gigahertz plus a little bit more and um, as you can see we have one uh, clean tone actually I had to have to increase the span to see uh, if there are any harmonics of course um, and you can see it's about uh, about 8 dBm or something I can do a big search and there we go 1.8 gigahertz at uh, 8.17 or 0 about 8, 8 dBm we have here and um, what I will do now is, uh, as I mentioned, the oscillator is voltage controlled, so it has a control voltage, 
and I will now pull down the control voltage um, with uh, another output of the laboratory power supply. I will just supply a very low voltage to the control voltage. This will pull it down and this will pull down the frequency. And uh, let me do that to see what this does. Oops. So now you can see I've pulled it down and now it's of course at the frequency that's way too low and if I release it, have you seen that? It's very interesting. It jumped up to a higher frequency, which is actually the upper limit of the uh, voltage controlled oscillator and then it went straight back to the lock, locking point. And if I do the same thing but with a voltage that's too high, so let me do that. So now I will get a frequency that's too high and if I release it now it will jump back to the lock without going to the um, in the negative range so to speak or, or less than the locking frequency and I will explain you why that is and why that is necessary uh, for the locking procedure of this thing but um, now let's jump right into the block diagram and uh, let me really explain what it does so now you see you have seen it and and the next step is to explain it a little more. So what is the big picture of this? It actually mixes a harmonic of the frequent of the reference oscillator with the microwave oscillator. And multiplicative mixing is, is a multiplication and you have some and different frequencies and if you use a harmonic of this oscillator that's 1800 MHz or 1.8 GHz and you mix it with 1.8 GHz then you will get DC but if you mix it with 1.8 GHz plus let's say 200 kHz then you will get an output of 200 kHz okay and this output then is amplified and um, then there comes a frequency to voltage conversion and this voltage is then used in an error amplifier and compensation circuit to drive the microwave oscillator and get it to exactly oscillate at the uh, frequency that I want. So here we have the reference oscillator with 200 uh, with 20 megahertz then this stuff here is a frequency multiplier and this here is a bandpass filter to select uh, only um, 180 megahertz so this is a two stage frequency multiplier the first stage multiplies by 3 and the second stage multiplies by 3 3 times 3 equals 9, 20 times 9 equals 180, so we get 180 at the output, then this is filtered. Um, I also have drawn a block diagram of this, um, so that you can follow the block diagram. So if you look uh, here at this, we have our reference oscillator, this is our 20 MHz reference oscillator, buffer, here is a buffer, this is a times 3 multiplier, another buffer, Times, times 3 multiplier, another buffer, and another buffer and output matching. Um, then here we have our bandpass filter, which ensures that there is really only the 180 megahertz present at the output. It's already quite clean here, but it's even cleaner after this filter. Then there comes a special circuit that converts this 180 megahertz, which is a sine wave at this point here. It's just 180 megahertz sine wave no other components, then it converts this into a pulse train. So it's actually uh, on the oscilloscope it looks you have many many pulses and the period of the pulses is the same as the period of, of 180 megahertz. But since they are very sharp pulses they have uh, lots of harmonics and lots of high frequency uh, content uh, because if you do the uh, Fourier transform of an ideal pulse you also get uh, pulses in the spectrum. So in the spectrum you also have peaks and the uh, distance between these uh, individual pulses is 180 megahertz and it uh, mixes 
this pulse train with um, the microwave oscillator, which is this. And this uh, microwave oscillator actually oscillates at um, 1,800,225 kilohertz, so 1.8 gigahertz plus 225 kilohertz. This is the frequency that it has in the locking condition. So all frequencies and voltages that are marked on here are in the locking condition. So this is the, the oscillator, then it gets amplified here. Then here we have a, a directional coupler um, that uh, here we have the RF out and it couples some of the signal into the mixer. So here we're mixing this uh, 1.8 gigahertz plus 225 kilohertz with the uh, 1.8 gigahertz, uh, or actually with, with, with multiple pulses, but the pulse that we want to select is the, the 1.8 gigahertz pulse. So we have lots of, of mixing products here at the output, but the mixer also contains a filter that uh, selects uh, only the low end, so it's only a low pass filter, and uh, therefore the only output frequency that we get is the 225 kilohertz, which is the exact difference between 100, uh, 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 1.8 gigahertz and this 1.8 gigahertz plus the 225 kilohertz. So here we get um, this output, and then this output goes to two uh, amplifier stages. Um, this is necessary because the output of the mixer is quite low, so we need this amplifier. And after this amplifier, we have something very interesting, which is a frequency to voltage converter. So this gets a frequency at the input and gives a voltage at the output. And I've designed it in such a way that um, when we reach the 225 kilohertz, um, the output voltage is 0.6 volts. And 0.6 volts is a diodrop, so this makes sense, or maybe a base emitter juncture of a transistor. So it makes sense why I've chosen this. Um, by the way, uh, maybe you might think that um, wh when I'm doing this frequency to voltage uh, conversation uh, conversion, um, it gets very inaccurate because here we have this super precise quartz crystal, and then we have this converted that might be not nearly as accurate as this. But keep in mind that. Uh, the offset here is extremely tiny. It's only 225 kilohertz, so that's that's why I've written the the whole number here. So it's extremely uh, extremely tiny, and therefore, even if this has a really high difference uh, or, or tolerance, uh, it won't make much difference uh, to the final output because of the very very low um, IF that's produced here. Okay. Um, Yes, and then the output of this frequency to voltage converter goes into this uh, block here, which is the mm, controlling circuit. And here I've drawn two blocks. This is the error amplifier and uh, compensation. And this block gives then a control voltage that goes uh, into the oscillator. And then this loop here solves a very important issue, or it's very important to solve a issue, and that is um, the error amplifier doesn't know if uh, the frequency at the output is below or above the correct frequency. Um, because if it is above the correct frequency, let's say it is uh, not uh, 1.8 gigahertz, but it's 1.801 gigahertz, then it's above this. Um, and uh, then the output voltage here will reflect that it, it will be too high and uh, then this thing has negative feedback or gives negative feedback to the um, oscillator to steer it back to the uh, correct value. However, uh, if this frequency is, let's say, uh, 1795 uh, megahertz, um, then it is below, but the output of the mixer will still be a frequency, in this case it's, it's, it would be 5 MHz, which is um, still a high frequency, and then this voltage to frequency converter gives also a high voltage, and this uh, error amplifier then also thinks uh, that the, the frequency is above. And since it is above, it, it will pull down, but if it pulls down, then we have a trouble, because uh, it's actually below, and then we have positive feedback, so it will pull it even further below, and that's actually a trouble because then we end up at the minimum range uh, 
uh, of this oscillator and, and then we get stuck. And therefore we have this minimum detection output. This is if this uh, error amplifier pulls the uh, control voltage uh, below a certain voltage and this voltage is basically the minimum voltage of uh, the, the minimum cold draw voltage that this uh, oscillator can handle. If it pulls it below this voltage, then uh, this oscillator here gets triggered. This is a, a search, I call it a search multivibrator. And this kicks the error amplifier back to the maximum uh, val value. So to the maximum, uh, to the control voltage that causes the maximum output frequency. And when we turn the thing on, you have seen that the um, output frequency at the first instant was at the a very high point. And this is exactly because this is the startup um, procedure of this thing. And even if we uh, pull it out of frequency, then if, if, if we pulled it out, uh, we pulled it um, down to a frequency below 1.8 gigahertz. And then this uh, oscillator also kicked in and pulled it up to the highest uh, frequency that the uh, microwave oscillator can handle and then the uh, air amplifier and compensation kicked back in and pulled it back. So this is very important um, because without this the thing would only work at 50% of the possible situations that could occur. It would only work if the voltage is uh, initially or if the frequency is initially too high then it would work and would it will only work um, if there's any uh, interference here and uh, if the interference causes it is to go to a too high voltage and it would work but not uh, at the frequency that is too low. So uh, this is very very important to, to, to do the steering. Um, so now that we know the block diagram let's go back to the uh, real circuit and maybe look a little bit closer to the individual components. Um, so there we go. So this is as mentioned, um, let me disconnect this here. Um, so this here is, as, as mentioned, this is the crystal oscillator, the oscillator is in this section here. Uh, then we have multiple multiplier stages um, and uh, yes, so we have times three, then we have times three and then here we have the two buffers, buffers here. Uh, the way how this actually works, I can go into more detail maybe in a later video, but the way how this works, basically um, the, the transistors, this is, these are all transistor amplifiers and the multipliers are uh, connected in such a way that these amplifiers generate overtones and um, there's a tuned LC circuit in the collector circuit of these um, amplifiers and the overtones are in the collector current and the LC circuit has is, is, is selected in such a way that it only or it resonates at the desired multiple of the frequency and uh, since it resonates at that frequency it will have a high very very high impedance and since the current the collector current contains all the frequencies or, or not all the but but contains all the, the multiples uh, it will pick the right one and I've just selected so if the, the crystal is, is 20 megahertz then I've selected the first tune sec circuit for the first multiplier um, to uh, be uh, 20 times 3 which is 60 uh, megahertz and uh, for the second multiplier the tune circuit I've selected to 180 megahertz. Okay so now the next stage here is um, a band pass filter. This is implemented using uh, two coupled resonators as you can see here and uh, there is no uh, wire between these two resonators. So here we have an LC circuit and here we have an LC circuit with no wires in between. So this is just the coupling of these uh, inductors here and um, this is actually basic physics. This is also like uh, the, the oscillator. If you have um, two pendulums and they are connected with a spring, then you also have this phenomenon that you get a, a beat frequency so that you get actually two uh, 
um, frequencies out of this. And this is actually the same thing. So you have, this is <laughs> your first and this is your second pendulum and they are connected uh, and uh, they will resonate at uh, a little bit a little bit below and a little bit above the, the center frequency and this will give you uh, a, a bandpass filter characteristics that's uh, also what's uh, what the uh, band filters inside radios are doing for example vacuum tube tube radios are also newer transistor radios have this this IF filter cans and that's actually what's inside they are also tunable so they have a ferrite ferrite inside uh, to tune the inductance and therefore to tune the circuit okay so now next up this is this is very interesting this is the pulse strain generator this utilizes a very interesting component um, that was also used widely in the 60s for example in oscilloscopes or spectrum analyzers um, to uh, generate or to, to sharpen pulses or generate pulse trains or something um, and this is st a step recovery diode a step recovery diode in, in, in forward direction it works like a normal diode but in reverse direction um, it will conduct current for a short time but then it very abruptly stops the conduction and that's when that, that and, and this is what you can use to to realize very 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 sharp impulses um, and then here I have a transmission line that goes to ground on the other side this is at the output because basically with this uh, step recovery diode I generate a square wave uh, with very very sharp rise times and this transmission line is a short and if I put a square wave into this then I will only get the very sharp rise times. So I will only get the pulses but then the square wave sees the short and once it sees the short it dies out and then nothing is left then here we have uh, the RF mixer here this is also a very interesting thing it's, it's based on a structure on a hybrid structure that's called uh, red rays um, and uses uh, it's a balanced mixer it uses uh, two mixing diodes in, in, in one uh, package here so this is oops this is this um, sorry this is this SMT uh, package here and here we have the input of the, the of the um, directional coupler the output of the directional coupler goes here to the first mixer input and then here we have the input of the multiplied signal and here is the mixing output which uh, in lock condition gives uh, 225 kilohertz so the output of the mixer goes into this here this is uh, I did this in SMT I could have done it also in through hole and maybe I, I will do also a through hole version of this it's just I switched technologies uh, here just just for fun there's no no particular reason why, I'm, why I did this in SMT um, uh, by the way these are RF uh, transistors because this has to go quite high because the, the maximum uh, difference frequency can go quite high and this has still to work but it could be it's not a problem to do this with through all components um, this is actually this is uh, two stages as shown in the block diagram we are now uh, here at this point here we are now at this point so where we have the output of the mixer here and then it goes to this two stage amplifier this is the two stages and they are connected in a uh, cascode they are two cascode amplifiers and then the output of this goes into a very cute circuit so here we have a very cute circuit this is the frequency to voltage converter that takes the amplified input from the mixer and converts it into a voltage and I will make a separate video about this because it's very cute it's based on a transform and two diodes so it's basically a, a passive circuit and yeah I will make a it, it deserves its own video so um, if someone is interested in it of course I will I will make a video so tell me if you're interesting but it's very cute so 
I will make a separate video on this. Okay, and this is the controller actually. This uh, is uh, it, here is the the, the so the, the DC output of the voltage uh, to uh, the frequency to voltage converter DC output goes into this circuit. So and there's an error amplifier compensation and surge oscillator on here. Um, so here this is the surge oscillator here and this here is the error amplifier and this capacitor is part of the compensation. I made them pluggable as you can see you can unplug them to so, so I've used this to optimize the compensation of this. So now we are moving to this black box or actually co copper, copper box um, and in here is the 1.8 gigahertz oscillator and I don't want to open it up uh, now but I can show you what's inside because I've built another one um, this is very similar it's the same construction but it oscillates at 2.25 gigahertz so the structures are a bit smaller and this uh, utilizes microstrip technology um, actually I this is not uh, etched circuit board I actually completely bread boiled it with this copper tape here you can see just cut the tape and then stick it on here and that's what I did um, this uh, actually uses a microstrip resonator so this here is the resonator this point this is also very interesting it, this, this also deserves its its own video so this is a resonator and uh, you can use microstrip as resonator because if, if you short the microstrip and then you get uh, one uh, fourth of the wavelengths, um, then it turns into an open. And if you go uh, even further, then it turns back into a short and so on. And it repeats itself. And this is a similar property that an LC resonance circuit has. The only difference is that it, 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 it changes between open, short, open, short, open, short and an LC has only an LC resonator has only one resonance frequency so this has multiple resonance frequencies and now I'm thinking <laughs> why is it oscillating at the right frequency because there are multiple possible fr frequencies that could oscillate uh, the reason is very simple because the bandwidth of the transistor is limited of course and uh, if you choose the right components then it will oscillate at the at the frequency so I really enjoyed designing this I really enjoyed uh, building this with, with copper tape breadboarding and so on so pretty pretty cool thing it deserves its own it deserves it deserves its own video um but yeah and and by the way the transistor on here there's one active device of course because you need an, an uh, active device to sustain oscill oscillation this is a bfr uh 193 transistors a common rf transistor and well um how, how did i make it tunable at the end of this resonator I didn't directly short it I put the capacitance diode here to uh, adjust the uh, runtime of the transmission line and I tuned the capacitance the director diode is also the term for it I tuned it um, with this voltage that comes in here there is also more filtering and, and the real thing the, here we have only one capacitor the resistor but there is another resistor in here um, and this uh, diode goes to ground and can be tuned here and to change the frequency and as you can see I've just, I just drilled holes it's about 3.5 millimeter hole here or 3 millimeter and then I filled this with uh, solder and on the other side as well and so I made a, sh uh, a good grounding connection so th this is also here the emitter of this transistor is also di directly died to ground and I did the same thing here here you can see uh, the solder on the on the copper side and it goes through here and uh, it's also just a hole so this is a very good method for grounding it's actually pretty you, you can do great microwave prototyping with this method and to fine tune it so to get it to the right frequency when this is uh, at center voltage I, as you, you can see here there are some cuts in here so I cut it this copper tape here until I reached the frequency that I desired so I, I connected uh, the center tuning voltage to here so to speak 
and then I cut the copper here until I arrived at this frequency. So pretty cool stuff. Then over here we have my microwave amplifier. It has two stages. So this is the output of the oscillator that feeds into here. So we have here two stages. Um, this is etched, uh, an etched PCP. And this here is uh, again this uh, copper tape here. This is used for matching, impedance matching. So I use this copper tape so that I can cut it to get uh, or to arrive at the right length. And here we have the biasing network of the transistors. And this transmission line is uh, also uh, one fourth of the wavelength. So this means that if I have an open here, uh, or, or, or uh, if I have a short here, then it becomes an open here. So this collector sees high impedance. And if I have an open here, then it becomes a short here. So this is a short point for the RF. This is an open, this is an open. And I also used thin uh, transmission lines here to get uh, high impedance and thick transmission lines here to get the low impedance and the uh, complete thing repeats on the other side. Okay, and there we have some input filtering. It's also the same method that I drilled through the board, as you can see here, to connect the emitters to solid ground and all other po points that need solid ground. Okay, and here, this is the directional output coupler that feeds the mixer and in this case feeds the spectrum analyzer here or whatever is um, connected to the output. So now let's look at some individual waveforms. So the uh, so next I will show you the resulting waveform of this mixer here. And for this I will open it up at that point. As soon as I open it up at that point it will lose the lock of course. So what I will do is um, this is the control voltage input of the microwave oscillator and I will connect a power supply to, the, to this point here, variable power supply, so that I can sweep the microwave oscillator and then we will see what arrives at this output. So this will be very interesting. So let me set everything up and I'll be right back. Okay, so now I have hooked everything up. Um, I've connected my laboratory power supply here uh, to the control voltage of my oscillator. I broke the loop here and I connected the output of the mixer to my oscilloscope here and I've connected the output of the oscillator and an amplifier uh, to the spectrum analyzer. So here on the spectrum analyzer we see the output frequency and here we see the output of the mixer. Okay. So now let's take a closer look at these two uh, instruments. As mentioned here we have the output of the mixer and here we have the output of the oscillator after the amplifier. And now let me decrease the span a little bit on the oscilloscope. So yeah, let's go down to 10 megahertz. This means we have uh, 10 megahertz from here to here, so it's uh, 1 megahertz per division. And what we can see at the moment with this external tuning voltage that I have applied we are uh, 1 megahertz above the 1.8 gigahertz. 1.8 gigahertz is center, so we, have, we are at 1.81 gigahertz. And what do we expect uh, to see at the mixer output? Since we are at 1.801 uh, gigahertz and we are mixing it with the uh, 1.8 gigahertz pulse, we are selecting only this output because we are uh, low pass filtering the output. Um, we expect actually the output to be um, at uh, 1 megahertz. And if we look at the oscilloscope, um, it's uh, set to 500 nanoseconds per division. And one cycle takes uh, two divisions. So we have um, one microsecond. And one over one microsecond gives one megahertz. And this is exactly what we expect. So great. Um, if I now increase the voltage and what you uh, let, let me mention another thing as you can see there is a little bit of frequency modulation going on here so actually it's not just a little bit it's, it's quite substantial 
and you can also see it, it, it jitters here on the spectrum analyzer and this issue is because it's not locked and since there is noise from my uh, power from my external power supply which I supply the generator with and other noise that the signal generator has it's very unstable now even with this constant voltage and if I get nearer to the oscillator with my hand as you can see I can irritate it you can see and this is is not happening once it is locked okay so there, there's so this stabilization that's that's why we implement PLLs and such stuff to, to get rid of, of something okay so now the next step is um, I will increase the control voltage and as you can see the frequency increases here um, on the spectrum analyzer and of course also the difference frequency increases so we have a higher frequency displayed on the oscilloscope so what happens if we decrease it we decrease it and now we reach the 1.8 gigahertz and now the output is almost DC and actually if we reach 1.8 gigahertz we have a DC output and that would be also another way how to phase lock it by detect this DC output and uh, tune the oscillator to get to this DC output maybe that's another thing that I uh, could try and now if we decrease it further now that's very interesting now the frequency output of the mixer starts to increase again and this is quite clear because now the difference frequency is again higher and the mixer does not know if it is above or below in this case and therefore also this is what I mentioned before the controller does not know if it is above or below and um, it sees the same and this is why I have to I had to implement this uh, surge multi vibrator I mentioned before so um, if the controller then pulls it very very low then this surge multi vibrator gets triggered and puts it back to its maximum here okay and then the control loop kicks in and regulates it to the point where it should be okay um, so now let me show you another thing. I've reconnected the loop, so now it's working fine. But I changed one thing. I um, increased the time constant of the controller, so it's now very slow. And I did this on purpose because I want to show you how the regulation works in more detail. Um, so now I um, connect now an interference. I, I, I will pull the um, oscillator low to go to a low frequency. So now I've connected an external voltage to pull it low. And as soon as I release it, it will gain control. And now look carefully. Have you seen that? So it moved. The, the surge oscillator kicked in because it detected that it is too low. And then it moved it to the maximum. And then it slowly goes to the right value and goes back to the locking condition. And you can see this very well if I... Here, so now I still... Oops, sorry. And there we go. So now I connect the, so now I pull down the oscillator, okay, and now I disconnect, and there we go, it regulates. So you can see it much better by uh, increasing the time constant of the regulator. But of course, I will put it back to a fast time constant, so let me do that. So now it's going crazy, because I've unplugged the capacitor so okay that's working again and if I pull it low it's low and I release it and it regulates so it's much faster now but it's a bit cooler to see it with the uh, lower time constant or with the higher time constant to uh, yeah to get a better picture okay so now let me show you one more thing let me show you the output of this pulse generator um, since I have a very fast oscilloscope I can show you these pulses in time domain and I think this will be very interesting. Uh, so let's get right into it. So here we zoom in at the pulse generator and as you can see uh, for convenience I've connected everything with SMA connectors. So these are these common SMA RF connectors that you might know and love. And 
so I can connect my oscilloscope directly to this point um, which is of course 50 ohm terminated um, to see the output okay here we go now I've connected the pulse uh, generator output to the input of my sampling oscilloscope my analog sampling oscilloscope um, I've also connected a 10 dB attenuator to attenuate the signal a bit because it's a little bit too big for this um, input here so it needs this 10 dB attenuation and now um, actually this whole thing deserves another video because it uses sampling technique to sample down the signal so that uh, it, it does the, so the CRT doesn't have to display a 10 gigahertz signal or something that so the CRT has to display actually very low signal the heavy lifting um, happens in the sampling head and sampling circuits to convert the signal down it's very interesting very interesting I had to fix this um, and I learned a lot by fixing it because I started the schematics night and day it's, it was it was very very interesting to work on this so it deserves its own video but back to the topic here now we can see this um, pulses here um, and look at this is this beautiful we have very very sharp pulses keep in mind it's attenuated by 10 dp so it's a bit bigger in reality and look at this is this amazing and it's also amazing that this oscilloscope can handle it here so now you can if i if i put it into here i can also adjust the trigger a bit okay so now as you can see here uh this is one pulse Le let me zoom on in a bit on that here okay there we go there we go this is this is one one pulse and here you can see the pulse width we are 200 picoseconds per division so it's yeah it's about here you can see here in the middle of the pulse it's about 200 picoseconds okay so we are creating very very fast pulses here and the repetition rate of these pulses is um, the uh, the uh, to 180 megahertz. Um, since it's a sampling oscilloscope, I can also change the details. So how many samples are are taken actually? So I can change the scan rate. So if I decrease the scan rate, then it takes more and more samples, and the signal gets more and more detailed. But as you can see, the display is slower, of course. But there's another cool feature. This has an analog storage tube inside. So, so this tube is analog storage. So I can enable the analog storage. And as you can see, it stores the signal. I can change the persistence here. So if I have very long persistence, then it stores it very long. And if I go down with the persistence, it st stores it shortly. I realize it's flickery on the camera, but in reality, it looks amazing so now I put it here on a usable persistence and now look at this isn't this a great great image look at these pulses it's so amazing and 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 this test equipment is so amazing I really have to make an, an uh, separate video about this it's so cool it's so cool okay look at that is it actually here look at that isn't that amazing that is so amazing it's oh the, the camera has a very hard time to pick that up actually it's a bit too bright also for the camera so mm, yeah so let me just a little bit go down with the intensity Yeah, this looks so cool. <laughs> so now let's go back to non-storage mode. And I can increase scan rate again. Here, adjusting the trigger a bit. Okay, so this is so amazing. Yeah, it looks good on camera. Here you can see it's really, it's, it's constructing the signal from this individual sampling. It's a very interesting technique and it deserves its own video.
Okay, so here I've connected the pulse generator uh, to the spectrum analyzer because I also wanted to show you this. And look how beautiful this is. Um, here you can see I've uh, the, the stop frequency is now two gigahertz. Start frequency is zero, and you can see every one hundred and um, eighty megahertz we see a uh, impulse in the spectrum and actually we are mixing then the pulse um, if I go to peak search then let me go so this is the pulse this is 1.8 uh, gigahertz so this is the pulse which we are using uh, to mix this uh, signal and actually can I also go frequency stop frequency give it a little more three gigahertz so you can see also at three gigahertz there's still something left of this pulse train so very beautiful very beautiful two gigahertz okay so this concludes this uh, presentation video of uh, this project at least for now um, it was a lot of fun building this and figuring out the individual circuits and actually I learned a lot by doing it so I, I really enjoyed working on this project it was was amazing and um, maybe there will be some follow-up videos about some circuits in more detail so circuit level uh, videos in, in which I will show you uh, how I designed uh, the individual circuit and uh, maybe also some improvements okay and yeah so if you like this video then share and subscribe and give it a thumbs up and yeah uh thanks for watching see you in the next one and bye